Now, I know that it can be very enticing to grow it fast. I know if you are like me, um, you know, you want it yesterday <laughs> and you can get very impatient. And therefore, I really wanted to take this time today to share my learnings um, and my experiences and also what I hear and see from other practice owners with you. Now, as we wait for hopefully one or two of you to hop on at the very least, if you were wondering, yes, my hair is wet. Interesting yet irrelevant fact about me is I don't own a hairdryer. <laughs> I had long hair until very recently. Uh, then I decided to go short because I'm, I moved here to Agnes Water, which is a very hard part of Australia. And I, I thought short hair is more practical. And when I had long hair, I would just go to the hairdresser every Friday to have my hair washed and dried and done because why not? And then I realized, oh, I don't have a hairdryer. So I've just been going all natural. I just had a lovely morning run, had a swim, had a shower. So I'm as fresh, fresh as a daisy as I'm speaking to you guys about this very, very important topic. Now, this topic actually falls within one of the four F's of having a fabulous private practice. Of course, that is what we want, right? It has to be fabulous. Why not? And why can't it be? And those four F's, of course, is foundations, uh, fighting fear, frameworks. And yesterday I spoke about frameworks. So if you haven't seen that live stream training, have a look there. Have a listen to that and then freedom ultimately right because I don't know about you but for me when I pitch up every day and do the work that I do at the end of the day I want to get to a place of freedom where I have choice about how much time I invest in in whatever I want to um, and what it is that I do with my life right I want that freedom of choice rather than feeling that I have to do this or I have to do that or I have to be here or have to be that but today I want to talk to you about um, the pitfalls of growing too fast and that actually falls within the foundations section. So the foundations F, right, of having a fabulous private practice. And if you've ever done my how to start a private practice online course, you would know that I preach to those poor guys like only a great mum can. I preach to them, I lecture to them, over and over about you know <laughs> not letting the horse run away with you and not growing too fast and getting your foundations right why because of these three things that i want to share with you and as i said there's actually way more than three um but i want to share these three with you so the number one thing that happens if you grow your practice too fast and that is that this little thing called leadership exhaustion occurs. Now tell me, who is the leader in your private practice? It's you, okay? It's you. Now we all know about self-care, we all know about burnout and all that stuff. And we preach to our clients every day about how important it is. And we check on them to make sure that they're doing what they have to do. But for us, when we're running a business, when we've taken that leap into private practice, maybe from a full-time job, uh, maybe, you know, our kids are going to school and we go, this is it, right? This is my chance. This is my opportunity. It is so easy to, uh, and I've been there, right? To jump with both feet and you have to jump with both feet, right? But to not look after yourself in the process, to push too much, to do too much and Take it from me. I think if you've known me more than five minutes, you would know that I'm all for the hustle. I believe in hard work. I've got a really high work ethic, but it's no, no use pushing yourself to the point where what's called leadership exhaustion occurs, right? And that is where you are absolutely so exhausted that you don't have the time and the mental and emotional uh, capacity to make the right business decisions in your business right and what tends to happen you just stay on the hamster wheel you fall off every now and then and then you just climb back on again but you can't make good decisions for your business because 
you just don't have the capacity to do it, right? And that's when you start dropping the ball and very easily things can go to hell then, <laughs> you know, fall to pieces. So that's the first pitfall, right? We don't want that to happen. Uh, the second thing that happens often is troop exhaustion. Okay, so who's your troops? That's your team. It can be your front desk team. It can be your clinician team, right? Um, and what often happens is a practice grows so fast. You know, maybe it's a practice that started doing NDIS work. There's a huge demand for it. And, you know, the team's books just fill up so quickly. The wait list fills up. We know how tough it is currently in the marketplace to find, um, you know, to recruit team members. Um, and what happens? Our poor team starts to get exhausted because they need to pick up the slack, right? Or I've heard stories, which is, which is not good, of practices, you know, just adding on clients to the end of the day. At, um, you know, let's say if somebody has a roster of seeing six clients, uh, by lunchtime when they look, they might have eight clients booked. And that's not okay for that to happen, right? You have to be very mindful. And it is so, it, it, it is so difficult because I know you as a practice owner, and your team, your heart is in the right place. Like you want to help these clients, right? You want to help them. You don't like not, not being able to provide them that service. So you push yourself, you tell yourself, okay, one more client's not gonna hurt. Okay, one more hour is not gonna hurt. Okay, one more day of clinical work is not gonna hurt. But at the end of the day, it does, okay? And it's gonna help nobody when your team is completely exhausted. So you need to pace the growth of your practice, okay? You cannot let the demand dictate what you do to the detriment of your team, okay? Because again, if your team burns out and you burn out, everybody loses. Then the third one. <laughs> pitfall of moving too fast is that people don't first and foremost yeah there's actually two parts to number three first and foremost they don't make the time to actually sit down and write out their policies processes systems right and then the second part is let's say even if they've done that let's say they've just started they're 12 months in they've written it all they go go me I, I've done it I'm so proud of myself it looks so nice maybe if I print it out or look at all these folders in my Dropbox and I've got my whole operating manual in there but the problem is that these things change consistently right your booking guidelines when you were a solo practitioner to when you had three people on your team to when you had ten people on your team is gonna be very different you have to consistently update policies and processes you need to consistently go okay this policy the booking guidelines here is this still the most effective way of doing it um, is there a more automated way of doing it is there a smarter way of doing it you know how can we take man out hours out of this process you need to consistently go through that process and a bonus tip for you is that what I tell my mentoring clients to do when you're writing policies processes systems don't write it for where your practice is at right now okay think to yourself I know what my strategic plan is, what my 12 month goal is for my practice, what I want to achieve. So ask yourself, what does this policy, again, let's use our example of booking guidelines, need to look like in six months time? Because guess what? Six months goes like that. <laughs> it goes so quickly. And if you write it now, in three months, this policy is outdated again. So always go, okay, this is what we're doing right now. What does this policy need to look like in six months time? And that's the policy that you write. And that way you are always, you know, uh, 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 what's, the, what's the English saying? Ahead of the curve or ahead of the something, right? Which means you get time to roll it out to your team so that they don't go, oh my goodness, what's this change? Uh, they get time to process it. You get time to train your front desk up in it you get time for your clinicians to get their heads around it so by the time the practice needs to operate with this policy everybody's good to go right you really want to make your life easier as a practice owner there is enough challenges already so you have to be mindful of these pitfalls 
Alrighty, so that is the topic for today. Um, you know, and it's part of foundations because if you do not take the time to look after you, your team, your policies, your processes, and everything else, and there's lots more that need to be done in terms of getting the foundations right in your private practice, then you're gonna have issues later down the track, right? And you might tell me, oh, well, Gerda, my practice have been growing really well for the last one, two, or three years. Two, um, three years was actually the mark where my practice fell down because I've made all the mistakes in the world, right? I'm not talking out of book knowledge. I'm not talking from a, what I've heard other people experience. I'm talking from personal experience. And the first three years was like, Jesus, this is so easy. This is so amazing. Um, and then it all went to crap right because i didn't have my foundations right so please do not do it and it's also part and parcel of why i've ensured that we look at foundations when you come and join us at elevate 2020 because there is so much that you need to get your head around so if you do not have your elevate 2020 tickets as yet what is going on get those little suckers into your pocket get your not that they're real tickets it's digital get them into your inbox um get your tickets uh these are gonna sell out make sure you get them before the early bird expires go to www.elevate2020.com.au and i can't wait to see you elevate your practice your mindset your strategies your entire life because that is what it's all about i will speak to you soon and you have an amazing day bye for now